If you're an audio engineer, you're highly skilled at using technical equipment designed for working with sound. But the word engineer used to mean a lot more than it does today. In the 1950s, if you called yourself an engineer, you probably had a background in electronics, circuit design, repair, calibration, acoustics. You would have used multimeters, oscilloscopes, and signal generators routinely as part of your job. And when you twiddled knobs on a piece of gear, you didn't just listen to the sound, you probably had a good understanding of what was actually happening inside the metal box. And if you knew all of that, then of course you had some sort of formal background in the sciences, applied mathematics, physics, statistics, logic. Back in the 1950s, a good audio engineer would be equipped to publish a technical paper in a peer-reviewed journal. Nowadays, you'd be lucky to find an engineer who knew what the mix down button did on the Neve, let alone the broadcast button. There used to be a huge divide between audio engineers and audio files. One is a highly qualified professional with scientific rigor, and the other is a layman consumer. Nowadays, unfortunately, the two have somewhat converged. Losing that scientific background to audio engineering has created a breeding ground for pseudoscience, snake oil, and bullshit tarnishing our glorious profession. So one of my goals for this channel is to bring back analytical thinking to the world of audio engineering. Take for example this video of a dude who's comparing mixes he did with his new Neve console to mixes he did in Reaper. And if you look at the top comments, nobody even mentions the huge flaws in making such comparisons. People are talking about what they like and what they think sounds best and they think this is based on some sort of comparison between Reaper versus Neve console. But what this demonstrates and what it demonstrates demonstrates from the guy who made the video is they don't know how problematic such a comparison really is. So here's a clue why that might be. So what gear was I using in the mystery mix? Well for the mystery mix because it sounded kind of crappy I was probably using crappy gear right? No. It was the same, the same plugins, the same DAW, everything was completely the same. I just had slightly different settings on that mystery mix. The point is when we make comparisons and blind A-B tests, we must follow the following rule. Isolate all variables apart from the one you want to study. The Neve console versus Reaper guy seemingly wanted to understand the variable sonic deviation of Neve console relative to Reaper as a benchmark. However, his A and B mixes were completely independent and subjectively mixed. He did one on one day and then did a completely different subjective mix with other equipment on another day and nothing was matched or held equal between the two. So we've not just got the one variable we want to study, we've got a whole bunch of variables. We've got his proficiency in using his Neve console versus Reaper, his current favourite mix references, how alert he was when he was making the mixes, had he just drunk some coffee, was he sleepy, how fatigued were his ears before he started mixing. How long did it take him to mix each mix because ear fatigue would mount during the session? How many sessions did it take him to mix? What was his mood like when he was mixing? Was he sitting in the same place in the same room with the same speaker set up? Or was there anything else in the room? A vacuum cleaner being in the room, for example, can act as a Helmholtz resonator, which would slightly change the bass response. If the second mix was mixed a whole bunch of months later, he might have had additional wax build up in his ears, and then his high frequencies might have been off compared to his first mix. So we've got at least nine or 10 or more variables aside from our initial variable that we actually want to study. How do we know which variable was swinging the results? To give a bit of an idea of how big the subjective human component between two mixes can be, I'm going to make a quick rough mix of a track, and I'm going to close it, open it up fresh, and make another quick rough mix of the track. So one after the other, the same day, the same equipment, everything the same. I'm even going to be using the same kind of plugins, everything the same. I'm just going to subjectively mix it one way and subjectively mix it another way. Just a really quick rough mix of both. Let's hear the differences there. Okay, so the differences between those two rough mixes is quite substantial and I just mixed them on the same day, one after the other, using the same kind of gear in Reaper, the same DAW, everything's pretty much the same apart from my human subjectivity. Now imagine 
if we were trying to showcase the different sound of different gear by using different subjective mixes to demonstrate that. Well, the differences in the sound of gear would have to be so big, it would be even bigger than the human subjective component, right? Well, now let's have a listen to a quick example of the differences between gear. So I've got the crappiest EQ plugin which I can possibly find. It's a built-in free operating system parametric EQ with only a single band, it's so bad everything else on the market should sound better. So when we get this $350 API emulation EQ, it should sound significantly different, right? So different that it overwhelms those human subjective differences between the two mixes, right? Well, let's have a listen to the differences. So as you can see, although you can hear a bit of a difference between the API emulation and the crappy built-in operating system EQ, the difference between the two subjective mixes is way bigger than the difference between the gear in this case. So I'm absolutely not trying to say that gear doesn't matter and the way that you mix it is the only thing that matters. I think the way that you mix it is extremely important and that might be a 9 out of 10 on the makes a difference scale. And that example with the two EQs might be a 1 out of 10 on the making a difference scale. But if you're trying to demonstrate that 1 out of 10 difference by doing two subjective mixes, which is like a 9 out of 10 on making a difference, then you've absolutely swamped the differences caused by the gear in your subjective human variations between your mixes. Another absolute classic example of introducing new irrelevant variables which mess up your comparison is the before and after, where the after is louder. And you think, wow, the after sounds so much better. That processing is doing something so magical. But all it is, is it's just a bit louder and that's fooling you into thinking that it sounds better. So you absolutely must match before and after comparisons in loudness to isolate the variable of loudness so you can actually hear what is going on in the before and after. The actual processing is the thing you're interested in, not the level change between before and after. If you want to call yourself an audio engineer, you really must be informed of these kinds of things and be able to point out the bullshit where bullshit exists. So what actually is the difference of mixing on the Neve console versus mixing in Reaper? Well, I'm someone who uses Reaper as my main DAW and I've also spent a lot of time mixing and recording on Neve consoles. In my personal opinion, there is a massive difference between mixing on a Neve console and mixing in Reaper. Why is that? Is it the sound quality? Well, I'm sort of agnostic to the sound quality. It's more important about how it feels and how the experience is as a whole mixing on a Neve console. You're there in this nice studio and you've got this desk in front of you which is warm radiating heat and you get electric shock sometimes with the static from your shoes and all of this stuff just goes into how how you're actually using it patching stuff in and the hardware it's a really nice great experience mixing on the neve console but whether that has anything to do with the actual sound i'm not sure but i think that will definitely skew the way that you do mix and it's a very nice experience to have. So for the most part, when people argue about getting the Neve sound or the API, the SSL sound in plugins, I think people are sort of missing the point. But if we were genuinely interested in the sonic differences between a Neve console and the plugins, then we'd have to conduct a more meaningful test where we isolate all of the variables apart from that particular one that we want to study. And so keep that in mind. Anytime you see an AB comparison or any of these blind tests or comparisons of any kind, Ask yourself, have they isolated all variables apart from the one that I'm interested in? Now, the YouTube algorithm thinks that you want to watch this video. Is YouTube right or do you actually want to watch this video?